everyone. Uh, my name is Anche Wu. Um, today, I'm going to talk about a very interesting latent variable model for affectory neurons in piriform cortex. So, the The question we want to ask is, what are the dimensions of the olfactory perception? Previous work used PCA to do dimensionality reduction on olfactory perceptual judgment data, or they do dimensionality reduction for both the perceptual judgment data and the chemical uh, descriptor of odor and molecules. So both of the research um, have suggested that there exists some low dimensional olfactory perceptual space. So um, in our work, we're going to take a different approach to this problem. Um, we're going to seek to use neural responses to find such a low dimensional latent representation for the orders. The neural response we're going to use um, is collected from the olfactory neurons in piriform cortex. Piriform cortex is the main cortical region uh, for olfactory perception. So our experimental collaborators, uh, Stan and Bob, uh, simultaneously, simultaneously recorded olfactory neurons uh, neural response from layer two and three in piriform cortex using um, multi-photon microscopy in the wake semi-paralyzed uh, mice. In order to analyze such a data, we take the total fluorescence of each neuron within a two-second time window following the presentation of the odorants. So the raw data we analyze is a matrix with neural response. Each row of this matrix corresponds to the neural population recording uh, when presenting a specific order. If we do PCA uh, for dimensionality reduction on this data set, we're going to see um, this data set seems to be very high dimensional because there are a large number of principal components required to capture the, vari the majority of the vari variance in, the, in this data. But this is not what we want. As suggested in the beginning, we showed that previous work um, in the, uh, for, for olfactory perceptual data set suggests there exists a low dimensional olfactory perceptual space. So we want to use some nonlinear non dimension reduction method to find such a low dimensional space using only the neural population data. Uh, we propose our model as a generative model, which consists of a low dimensional representation of the orders, as well as a mapping from the latent space to the neural response. And we define this, latent, this mapping to be tuning curve. Mm, our goal is to, given the observed neural response, we want to infer this low dimensional representation of the orders, as well as infer the neuronal tuning curves. So um, the model we propose is called Gaussian latent variable model, which is GPLVM with structure noise. I'm going to talk about the latent variable model first and explain the structure noise uh, later. So first, let's take a look at this low dimensional representation. Um, each order end has its own latent representation denoted by x here. We assume there's a standard normal prior for x. For the tuning curves, we assume individual neuron, we assume f of x as the tuning curve for individual neurons. Now, uh, also, this individual neuron's tuning curve f of x has a Gaussian process prior with a smoothing kernel. <laughs> Gaussian process is some distribution you can use to generate smooth functions. So with such a smooth prior, we can impose smooth assumption over these tuning curves, which is more interpretable. Okay, now given an arbitrary order's latent location, we can input this into tuning curves to get the mean response for individual neurons. And we can do the same thing for, for another order end um, through the tuning curve. Finally, we will get the neural population responses for all the order ends. But this is um, the noiseless version. In order to get the noisy observed neural response, we need to add some noise to it. The noise um, we assume here is a Gaussian noise consist consisting of two components. The um, sigma of 
of x is the order-dependent variance, and the epsilon is the ga correlated Gaussian noise. This two to get together is what we call a structure noise. With such a structure noise, we will get the noisy observed neural response from the mean response um, output, output from the tuning curve. Now we define this whole generative model, and just to remind you, in order to solve the problem, we, um, we are only given the observed neural responses, and our goal is to infer the latent, the latent representation of the orderance, as well as the tuning curves for individual neurons. Okay? So, um, in order to test our idea, we apply our model to a neural data set. Um, this neural response um, is generated from the olfactory neuron responding to a set of specifically designed orders. So this order, this set of order, which is, which is um, uh, represented as the color dots here, are designed um, to span a specific region of the PC dimension of its chemical space. So the first principal component of this chemical space in implies the increase in carbon chain length. And the second PC um, separates the functional group. Um, the selected uh, order set spans four different functional groups, which is indi indicated by the colors here. Um, they are esters, aldehydes, ketones, and acids. Within each functional group, um, the molecules has incrementally varied carbon chain length. That's why you see this line-shaped topography in this chemical space. So this is really nice topography of these orderings in the chemical space, but this information is unaccessible to, uh, to the modeling procedure. What we're going to do is only use neural population responses corresponding to these orderings to, to, analy uh, to analyze this two-dimensional, low-dimensional latent space. Here I'm going to show a 2D latent representation of these orders. Uh, first, we use PCA. Remember at the beginning, I show the PCA results on this neural data. We have a lot of principal components um, capturing the ma majority variance of the data. Um, here, I'm only showing the first two principal component components to plot this, uh, to plot this to the uh, latents. Um, you can see PC, PCA result doesn't really give you that well-separated functional group. Also, within some of the group, you don't see this, nine, this nice uh, line-shaped structure. But using, in contrast, using our GPLVM um, method, we can learn something interesting. The, order, the orders sharing the same functional group exhibit this line-shaped structure, which resemble the chemical representation a lot. Also, the functional groups from with a color by these four colors are well separated by linear hyperplane. And we can see the x-axis also indicate the functional group, and the y-axis also indicate the increase in carbon chain length. So this is really nice. This provides really nice interpretability for our uh, latent space. OK, so now, given such a latent space, it looks nice. What are we going to do with it, right? So the first thing we can do is we can validate whether a single neural um, response can be well modeled by such a latent. Um, so here is an example of a two-dimensional tuning curve for, for one example single neuron. And if we place the latent for these 22 orders um, on top of the tuning curve, we can generate the mean response um, using our model. So in this plot, the x-axis is the order number for these 22 orders. The y-axis is the mean response rate. The field bar is the true data response. And the light bar is the model predicted response. Each pair is the data and model response for each order. So you can see, um, comparing each pair, these two estimations match each other pretty well. So this implies that our model is able to identify some low dimensional space as well as the tuning curves that explain the data well. So this is really good. And, that, and then we want to also validate the, um, how well our model can predict new response given a new test order that we've never seen. Uh, we're going to do this investigation using a cross-validation method, uh, which is known as co-smoothing. 
So this cross-validation method is, um, is like this. Um, we, when we are given this, predict, uh, this new test order to the neural response, we will use other neurons' responses to infer the latent location of this test order. And then we will use the same procedure as in the previous slides. We will input this inferred latent location into the tuning curve of the single neuron to get the mean response uh, prediction for this order, which is indicated in this um, block in this box here. In this box here, so we can compare its true neural response and its model predictive neural response, so that we can evaluate the model predictive ability to have that neurons uh, to have that orders. Okay, we can do this prediction for all the set of orders using this uh, cross validation method and we can plot this R-square value of predictive responses to head on neurons. R-square value is basically something um, that we can use to evaluate the predictive performance. The larger the value is, the, the, the better the performance is. The x-axis indicate the PCA results, the y-axis indicate the GPLVM results. But here, the red dots are only the, the standard vanilla GPLVM without independent noise. So you can see with this nice nonlinear latent, latent variable model, we can already significantly improve the prediction performance. Furthermore, um, if we plot our GPLVM model with the structure noise, we further improve the uh, predictive ability. Um, Note it, the green dot is our structure model, is, is our model with structure noise, and each green dot is always above its red dots. So this means uh, with our GPLVM structure noise, we not only learn some interpretable latent structure and tuning curve, we also improve the um, prediction performance of, of our model over both PCA and vanilla GPLVM. So, okay, so this is our quantitative performance. In a summary, we develop a latent variable model that can extract a low dimensional olfactory manifold using only neural response data. And also, this manifold is very well interpretable and it resembles the chemical representation a lot. Next, we can identify interpretable nonlinear tuning curves over this manifold to map the latent from the neural response. Finally, we can show these GPLVM model with structure noise can significantly improve the predictive ability of our model compared with PCA and vanilla GPLVM. So for some future directions, I'd like to say, uh, one thing we want to do is we can explicitly map the, the latent, uh, or the, map the chemical space to the neural response. We can also use examining the tuning curve and manifold changes during the animal learning to study single neuron behavior. Um, thirdly, we can identify latent manifold across animals using more hierarchical latent variable model. Um, last but not the least, we want to apply our model to more neural data where we don't know anything about the, the low dimensional perceptual space. Okay. So finally, I'd like to thank my PI, Professor Jonathan Pillow, and my collaborators, um, Stan Pashkovsky and Professor Bob Data for their great uh, advice and help on this project. And we, we'd like to thank our funding resources as well. Thank you very much. So uh, I thought it was interesting that you had this um, sigma of X term in your, in your model. Um, and it made me wonder, do you find that uh, nearby odors in the latent space actually have very different um, variances? Uh, well, it's possible because our odor is, we only, we only model the variance depends on the identity of the odor, but right. not like how, similarity, uh, how similar these two odors are. So um, because we don't, uh, when they present this odor stimuli to the animals, they do them in a, in a randomized fashion, so they don't, um, there's no, they, they want to decorrelate the, uh, like, decorrelate this order effect um, to the, uh, to the neural response. Right, but it, it, you, you show that you do have these sort of smooth um, receptive fields yeah. over your latent space, yeah. but then when you add this sigma x term, that uh, um, allows for the, the variance to be potentially very unsmooth, and I was just wondering if you had a chance to look at that. Oh, um, so 
the smooth is only for like the mean response, right? right? So um, the output, the, the tuning curve is smooth, so when it responds to the latent dimension, it will get return your smooth mean response. But when you, you have to, in order to get observed neural, uh, neural response, you need to add noise to that. Given the noise, when, when you add the noise, you probably won't have very smooth structure because, um, you know, things could be really heteroscedastic or homoscedastic or whatever. Like, it might be order dependent, it might be neural correlated. There are many different mechanisms underlying these noises. So we won't really see smooth um, neural response, very smooth neural response um, in observed measure neural response data. Yeah, I, I was just wondering if, um, when you look in the latent space of these odors, if you s if you do see smoothness in the variance, but maybe that's something you haven't looked at yet. Oh uh, yeah, you that, that's, cer that's you certainly could do so with your uh, model. That that's a good point. We should uh, we didn't really check like the smoothness of the variance of these order dependent noise, but it would be really interesting to see whether there's a relation between that noise with their uh, latent representation. Exactly. Cool. Uh, yeah. So I think this is a, a related question, but so you showed that you can predict where to place odors in the latent space with which I, I, at least I think of as a statement about the smoothness of the manifold that you're estimating. I'm wondering how well it works the other way around. Can you predict, uh, how accurately can you predict the, uh, the responses of held out neurons? My intuition is that that's going to be much less smooth. Um, you mean, are you, uh, so the question is, you are, so first, our, we don't assume smoothness over the manifold because we put a normal prior. There's no structure yeah. assumption. No, I'm not asking about smooth uh, assumption of smoothness. Yeah. I, I'm more stating that it, it makes sense, I think, that uh, to me that you can predict the look, where to place held out odors if the manifold that you are finding is smooth. But the reverse might not be true, that predicting the response of a held out neuron to a wide panel of odors might be substantially harder. Is that is that accurate? Uh, you're saying like predicting the neural response uh, for a single neuron for across the whole um, manifold cannot should not be smooth. Um, well, if you have a neuron and we assume like the tuning curve of this neuron is smooth, and when you spread out the whole space of the latent space, you should have some smooth. Uh, response. That's like based on the model assumption. And then in terms of the observed neural response, you might have some other additional additive like Gaussian noise that might break your smooth, uh, smooth structure. But the mean response rate should be smooth over the entire um, latent space. Yeah. All right. Maybe uh, how about one more question and then we should probably uh, move on. Uh, Okay, maybe okay. this one. Um, you treat the um, chemical space as a sort of proxy to ground truth, but the neural should be, could be related to perceptual as well as chemical, so um, I'm just sort of wondering why, why, um, <coughs> why assume that it's only gonna code chemical? Yeah, so <coughs> that's a really good question. Um, the one thing we, we, people keep asking about is like, how you relate this chemical information to your latent representation. But first, the thing is we never use this chemical information. We only um, use the neural data to study this latent. And we try to, sometimes we try to interpret the latent representation we found, and we happen to see they, they resemble the chemical representation of these orders in this 2D space. But certainly, I think your question is, well, our ultimate goal is to learn, to understand olfactory perceptual space. So it would be more interesting if we can, we will definitely ap apply this model to more orderance and experiments to fully expand this perceptual space, not only relates to the chemical presentation, but more like understanding about olfactory perception. But I guess this is also something people have very little knowledge about, and this is something we like to explore using our model. So yeah, we're not just saying like this is just chemical space. There should be more possibility uh, for this latent space. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks again. Um, <laughs>